All right, hello everybody. It's Alicia and Shad. We're so excited. We've never actually done something like this, um, but this is something we've been wanting to do to kind of kick off our Up Impact platform. Um, we want to go ahead and share more about our story, who we are, what we've done in the past, and introduce ourselves. So I'm Alicia, and this is Shad. It's nice to actually meet everybody. I'm real. I'm not a uh, figment of Alicia's imagination. I've uh, kind of avoided the camera for as long as possible, but she uh, finally convinced me on this one. So we're excited, and um, yeah, it's really been a it's been a fun journey to get to where we are and uh, kind of do the things we've done. So uh, we're excited to share with everybody. I know. I think that's the craziest part. If everyone's like, "We're Shad. We're Shad." Here he is. <laughs> He's live on camera. This is a big moment in history. Um, so yeah, today we just want to talk about you know our business, Live Infinitely, how we built it, grew it, sold it, uh, how we came up with the idea to create of impact, and what that means and what we're, what our goals are for the future. So shall we start back at? The scene is 2014. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, a few years ago. First, I feel like we should probably give the precursor. There's a uh, big old Great Dane in the background here that uh, doesn't there. like to be left alone. You can kind of see his paw there's there. There's a mini horse right there. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how well he behaves for this. But uh, he uh, was not letting us have the uh, the workout room to do this. So, uh, yeah, if you hear any uh, barking or squeaky toys, you'll know why. Or when you hear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you hear. Uh, he, our special guest is here indeed, but, but yeah, so 2014, well, backing up real quick, personal story. Um, we met in 2013, 13. Sure. Um, so it's been over 10 years ago now, which is crazy. Um, we kind of met each other when, when I was in the Disney college program and he was a pilot at the time and we didn't actually start dating until 2014. And so we, uh, at that time, I was looking into things you could do online because I wanted to start a business and I found that you could sell stuff on Amazon, which I thought was super cool. And um, I found that the, the course, Amazing Selling Machine, I took that, we started dating and we became partners, I think before we were really even serious. I was so uh, intrigued. They're like so confused because she's like uh, selling a cooling towel on Amazon, like just had launched. And I'm like, first off, what the hell is a cooling towel? And second off, what is Amazon? Like, legitimately don't think I had ever bought anything on Amazon prior to uh, uh, meeting her, talking to her. I actually ended up buying the very first cooling towel from her because I knew it was like her launch day of of that, starting that on Amazon. So, um, of course, and then like the true romantic I am that uh, <laughs> that led to an LLC agreement for uh, my Valentine's Day gift. Valentine's Day gift. So, uh yeah, so it was pretty much from day one, like we didn't even really start dating technically almost and we were business partners. Like mm -hmm. it was um it was definitely a different way to go about things and it could have uh could have definitely went south, but uh it worked know. out really really well, obviously. But yeah, that was um I I had no idea what I was doing in business and Shad is way more business savvy. Um <laughs> there's the there there is. There they are. Um Remy, come on. Bro. Chad is just way more business savvy. And so I was like trying things in business. And that's when he actually officially created the LLC agreement that we needed, made things official. Um, we went on a, a trip in Las Vegas together in February of 2015. Um, that's when we became like official business partners. Why are you laughing? I'm laughing because we snuck into the event we went to. We probably should send somebody some money for that ticket. But, no, we are broke little kids. But without... Uh, incriminating ourselves too much there was a selling event in vegas and we're like let's not buy the ticket let's just figure out a way to uh, sneak in there so we could use that money for inventory so to be fair i did buy the course initially invested everything but yeah and then we had the event to go to and so, and, and we wanted we wanted to learn we were we were just young kids with no money so we <laughs> it's like a catch me if you can i feel like that's the level we were you know like very very strategic and but was, um, yeah and that kicked things off. And uh, at that time, I had so Shad was the very first sale ever, like he said. And <clears throat> I decided to launch a cooling towel to make people cold in November when it's winter and nobody wants to be cold anymore. Uh, so you live and you learn. But then, well, don't keep us at suspense. How did that turn out? <laughs> that didn't turn out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that didn't turn out very well. I think I sold uh, a few thousand dollars um, throughout the the winter, which was exciting and cool, but. It, it wasn't really picking up. And then when we were in the Vegas conference together, that's when Shad had the idea of doing water bottles. 
And I was like, are you freaking crazy? Like you want to sell the most competitive product in the world uh, and compete against Nalgene and Nike and all the big players. And he's like, but listen, he's like, there's this thing called a fruit infuser water bottle. And I was like, what's that? <laughs> and so that was like, and that fruit infuser water bottle is really what kicked off everything for us. I feel like it's probably most ironic one, because I don't think I drink more than like a cup of water a month. <laughs> Anybody knows me who knows that I, uh, I'm a diet Mountain Dew, uh, enthusiast through and through. So, uh, his blood is diet Mountain Dew. For me to recommend selling water bottles and, and really have a argument to go for there. It was, um, yeah, it was definitely off brand for me, but um, yeah, so that's what we did. I there was definitely pushback. I remember constantly having to, uh, at first, you know, convince you of like why this was it just the, seemed crazy. The right I was like, process. that's so competitive. What do you do? What, like, okay. And then, but, but he learned how to like look at the numbers. And that's if you know, Shad, Shad's very good at numbers. And he was looking at it and it's like, this product has an opportunity. It's like, it was really not a lot of competition at all at that point. And we actually were able to find a uh, a place because we weren't really ready to go to China for it yet because that was still a black hole in, in some aspects. China is still a black hole in, in sourcing. And there's, there's um, if you're not careful, that, that definitely can go south for you quick. But um, there's actually a place in uh, Florida that we could have them mm -hmm. kind of branded with our with our yeah. logo. And just to start, because we, you know, minimal money, we weren't going to China for them. And um, yes, yeah, so we started with a, a print shop in Florida and um, we recruited my good old grandparents to. Uh, they were our first loan. Yep. Yeah. Well, even then, I think then oh, yeah, wasn't a loan. No. That was just um, hand packing, hand packing yeah. every single water bottle so we could get a mass. <laughs> hey, come on. Uh, we could get them printed with our logo uh, a couple hundred at a time. And then we would have to um, actually package them for sale, like put the label on them, the UPC, and oh, there he is! Look at this <laughs> special guest. Yep. Um, come on, yeah, save? that was an exhausting time, but that was how we saved a lot of money instead of going straight to China initially. Yeah, so got the bottles printed in Florida. I think the labels printed maybe at FedEx or something like that for the actual <laughs> products with the UPCs uh <laughs> hydration the very you know <laughs> oh, I forgot about that on, okay. I think you're about to have to leave the office the uh very first yeah. label set of these items we um you know put all the time in and to get the product and and have it done get it in Florida and then the labels that were actually that had the UPC on them there was a very simple but very like no idea how we missed it her hydration, hydration was misspelled. Uh, so H R. How do we spell? I don't even know, but it was spelled -R -R, her hydration. So like it was twenty four ounce uh, fruit infuser hydration. <laughs> it was so silly. I don't know how many we sent out until we realized that? But yeah, I think that the was customer pointed it out. Like I thought it was Grammy. Or somebody on Snapchat or something, no, a friend. Sure. Yeah, or maybe even Grammy. But, but yeah, who knows. It was silly. Yeah, we had our fair share of mistakes at the beginning. And then but we started making some sales. We started like kind of getting the system or you know, understanding it and and um started making some sales to the point where we were actually reordering actually faster than what we anticipated. Yeah. Um, and then it was like they they came in cases of 20 or 25. So I remember like emptying legitimately our change piggy bank to see how many extra cases we could get. I think we got extra like two cases out of it or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Putting uh, together all the coins and stuff. And yeah, Remy, you're going uh, crazy. It worked though. So then we we did that for a little while. Um, and really, I don't even know how it was how long it took us to actually start producing this stuff in, in China. Um, I think like seven months or so. I mean, I have a little timeline here of our first. Um, so in 2015, November of 2015, I think we were definitely, um, so um, we were definitely doing a, um, I think right here we have like a $10,000 a day it was in November of 2015. Um, and so it was around that time period that we were definitely going to China. So I don't know if that was like, we, so we launched the fruit infusers in February March, March time frame. And I think by like fall time we were ordering from China. Um, and that was about the time. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. sounds about right. I think our real first like, oh my God, this is actually working. Mother's, Mother's Day. Yeah, Mother's Day of that year. And we were too oblivious to even like 
piece together sales events. Yeah, that it was actually Mother's Day. So it was um we thought we were hacked. <laughs> yeah, we're like we thought it was a scam or we thought like something else that we were doing was just like we just I was on the trip somewhere. I was flying, I don't remember where, but I remember like landing and seeing our sales on Amazon and calling you to like right. Holy what shit. is going on? What is this? And it's actually like I don't remember how big those sales were or like what that was, yeah. but yeah. it was like when we I think we did like our first thirty or fifty thousand dollar a month in May. Maybe. Um, and because that was one of my big, big goals was to finally achieve fifty thousand. That was on my dream board, my vision board. And I believe we hit that with Mother's Day. And I was like, we were both just like, who hacked us? What's going on? <laughs> this is yeah. a bit real. We were running on inventory, so I remember raising the prices, and they just kept selling faster and faster. Like we we're trying to Did yeah, get off just... like twenty five, twenty seven dollars. Yeah, we're trying to slow the sales. We we're trying to slow the sales on just so we could get more inventory. So like, because with Amazon at that point, like. Um, volume and consistency was very, very important for ranking. So mm -hmm. it was, um, yeah, it was, and the, the higher the price went, the more they would sell. <laughs> so, but anywho, they, um, we actually kind of rode that high, I feel like for too long because we, we came off of Mother's Day thinking that like the marketing or the the stuff that we were doing, it was going to stay that way. It like took us a oh while. My gosh, you have such a good memory. It took us a while yeah. to actually like piece together, hey, this was just a holiday shopping event. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it was even maybe because it was the sales were before Mother's Day, you know, so people could gift them like a week or something. Right, so right. I didn't really yeah. uh, recognize. But then we kind of kind of got caught flat footed. We just were going to ride that high into retirement. And then we were like, that doesn't work. So um, just such a good memory. Yeah. And then like very new, uneducated business owners, we did the exact wrong thing to do. We decided to launch like 15 products then like yeah that's an exaggeration but like we just went all out like every product that we saw was a great idea to launch and then well our second product wasn't it the exercise balls and the hammocks and all of that stuff came at once that the was, whole exercise style like yeah. we went um and some of those products like the exercise ball ended up being very successful for us but we didn't really um understand cash flow yeah we didn't project that we didn't um understand or really consider the time frame from bringing stuff in from China when you're paying for it in the container and it's in the ocean and and the size of that stuff I mean we're a few months off of emptying a piggy bank to like signing on the dotted line for eighty thousand dollar containers like mm -hmm. where we're like well how are we going to pay for this I have no idea but we need it so <laughs> figure yeah. it out and it was um yeah we went really really wild for a minute I think it was the exercise balls then the hammocks that launched and then it was 2017 so I think throughout 16 we launched a few but 17 is when we did like the beach blankets inflatable loungers and like even like but the resistance bands and all that stuff was like, yeah, yeah so it yeah. was like foam rollers and the plastic yeah, that's what I mean. yeah we were it like because we wanted to grow that was like a big thing for us like we wanted to continue to keep scaling we we're also super nervous because it's like at that point could amazon shut down your water bottles let's like get more stability launch more products um so we went a little too crazy too fast um and yeah yeah we kind of balanced out we uh the foam roller was really successful it first and then like everything Amazon we it was so successful that it sold out mm -hmm. and then um it's like this massive pendulum swing as I like review this I just realized so it did really good we sold out so then we ordered like four three or four 40 foot containers of them is that really yeah <laughs> it was just insane amounts of volume and then um after they were produced but before we got them the listing got taken down on Amazon yeah because um I still have a bone to pick with those people. Certain company had more money than we did, so they um, were going to sue us for patent infringement, which it mm. clearly wasn't. And um, it, our product, this was one of the very few products that we from ground up designed, like on paper. We still actually have the plaster mold of it, like everything about this mm -hmm. product was custom designed. But the fact is, is that was kind of a strategy of bigger brands at that time is go after smaller ones, even if there's any uh, gray area, because Amazon one would pull your listing down until um, you won in court, but they had a whole lot more money than we did. Uh, we just kind of spent every bit of money that we even gathered to, you know, buy those containers to, mm -hmm. to pay for all the product. So we're sitting there in that position, just like, well, um, you know, we, we really pretty much backed down from the fight because we just didn't have the yeah. funds to, to fight them. So that um that's kind of a dirty 
trick that uh, brands used to use. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I know we um, we have a series, and I'm sure we'll go into depth more on future episodes of all the the craziness we've had to endure from lawsuits to patent infringements to taxes to all this stuff that just happens as you build a business but that was definitely I think the first one yeah that, like hit a part the first of many. <laughs> the first of but, many that really hurt um but that was definitely that was a, that was a big one for us yeah I look back on this and like the risk tolerance <laughs> yeah it was how we had and it's like, it's like not that you, yeah I just think back on that and we were just so young and like you were it was Chad we were both you, working two jobs at the time constantly so for I mean I don't even know what year it was we actually for, there was 2018 17 that we quit yeah that we both were literally lose our focus after we moved 16. back that was 16, 16 after, oh, yeah. uh, so 2016 was the first time so three years of doing all this we had both had you know two jobs essentially of some sort I was doing photography and like random gigs and Chad was a full airline pilot at American American Airlines. Equal, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. Um the um yeah, so it was it was interesting. But the um yeah, so anyhow, we found a way to kind of move the the move the foam rollers, use them for sponsorship events and kind of do stuff like that to is branding. Funny. Like yeah. it's definitely an expensive uh time, but we had a, that was when we had all the um, storage units in Orlando because we couldn't send the stuff to Amazon. What happened at one point, like six units? Six four <laughs> yeah, units that like we were paying for? Four 20-foot, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Stacked, like, you know, ground to ceiling, side to side of foam rollers that were fantastic that we had no idea where to sell it. Um, that was before we had, like... It's up there, actually. Any oh, presence no. of the website or any sales yeah, there, kind of like, like we could do the stuff on our own. But yeah, we lost a whole bunch of money there, but it all it all worked out. Yeah, there's lots lots of failures along the way, and that's why it's like so good that Shad's way better memory than I am. Like he'll always like come up like remember all of these things that we went through. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> so it's really good that you're here and that to tell the story. That was happening, and then we shipped stuff. We were trying to figure out ways, and then we went to. Um, typical Amazon style, they lure you in to, uh, they're going to help you. Um, they want you, you're such a great brand. They want you to expand internationally. So yeah. we're like, oh yeah, you guys are helping. We're all in. So then we sent containers, yes, 40 foot shipping containers to Canada the and UK. the UK. And then I think like, mm. I don't know, probably an exaggeration, but maybe a week after we sent the container to Canada, our rep, our rep disappeared. Almost. Yeah, our rep disappeared. <laughs> never answered another phone call. Never once heard from anybody um, ever again with any assistance from Amazon Canada till like a year or two after. And then letting us know that like our enrollment in the program had ended because they were supposed to help you for like a year. Yeah. And we'd never even talked to anybody. So anyhow, fast forward, um, we ended up actually finding one good product in Canada or two the, the bottles and the exercise balls yeah, ended up okay, yeah, yeah. Balls. yeah. yeah so, for sure. um, they did. so it worked out okay but that was a long road so it was just kind of those mistakes of like I guess all the noise there's a whole at that time and, and really even now there's so many ways you can make money there's you can expand you can add products you can do all this stuff and the two of us tried to do it all at once and that was like yeah that was the first like learning when you step back and look at it from a 30,000 foot view it's like oh maybe we shouldn't have done so much <laughs> yeah at once yeah so then like yeah because we were like international a thousand products and then we're like okay we're crazy and we kind of retreated and we're like let's focus on Shopify so we brought three and two or three 40 foot containers back from the UK Yep. <laughs> Every single product we had in the UK. I mean, it's just like the worst part too is they all have their own barcodes. They have different barcodes for Amazon um, UK. So when they came back, we had to resticker every single product with a new barcode. And thankfully, Shad has the best grandparents in the entire world. Um, <laughs> I think that was like the highlight of their entire winter. Really they come so sweet down to Florida <laughs> in the winters, um, or they used to. So they like it was they were our warehouse staff they loved it like we this we were the we weren't team. forcing them to work but it was like they that... begged us do you guys have more for us to do and they're just hard Shad just comes from a family of hardworking people and they're retired wanted something to do and it was a good summer but that was when we opened the warehouse like that we we went from storage sheds to uh Orlando and then we moved over a little further west in Florida and uh took everything out of storage sheds and actually got our first of like seven warehouses so we got mm -hmm. you know biggest warehouse at the time that we could afford which is like 
I don't know, yeah, 11, was, I think maybe was, 1,700 square feet or, or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, within within a month of being there, we had outgrown it already as the first containers came back. And um, we had realized kind of the how egregious Amazon is of storage fees in the holidays time frame. So mm -hmm. we had um, essentially kind of committed to if we stored our own products, that we could pay for the warehouse in, in like two or three months just by the amount of savings that we would have on for Amazon storage fees. Yeah, that was a huge move. It was like that was a, for a very, little. very smart financially, but very exhausting uh, socially and mentally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for a little bit. Um, I think it was like $25,000 a month or something like that. That we were paying? Yeah. For, for our warehouses? No, for Amazon storage. Yeah, That's yeah. why we, we, it was like 75 and they, they well, hit. Well, for, for holidays, wasn't it like? Well, that, that was it. That was okay. the, yeah. So that's yeah. what I'm talking about. So we came off of that and we opened the warehouse in April, mm -hmm. give or take. Um, so when we, they didn't hide the storage fees, but they don't, at that time, they didn't make it really easy to understand or see like, right. a little better with it. But yeah, we're like, wow, okay. That seems like an excessive amount of money mm -hmm. <clears throat> to pay Amazon. So anyhow, we opened up. That's how we got our first warehouse and our second. Well, real quick, before we jump to the warehouses, I, I want to like kind of circle back into the timeline of like, okay, we went crazy on Amazon, launched international, and then we decided to grow Shopify. Which came after the warehouse. Which came after the warehouse. How did we, <laughs> really? How did we ship? How did we ship? <laughs> right. our, yeah. Okay, you're right. So yeah, we were crazy. Um, and so 2017 is when we had like a thousand products, the loungers, the beach blankets, and it was 2018, right, that we opened up our warehouses. Yeah. Um, but I feel like we were trying Shopify before then, but we were just failing at it or something. So oh, like we we didn't really have it. I mean, yes, yeah, we had a Shopify or a website. There but, was no ads being ran. But you're right, yeah. Because then we opened up our warehouse. This is on Tanya. Like we need his memory for the whole timeline. <laughs> but we because uh, we opened our warehouse in April 2018, and then. Um, Google ads started picking up for, for, for the hammocks. For our hammocks. Yeah, because it was that's right. You know, spring, summer season. So we did actually decent on the hammocks that year. But it, the opening the warehouse one saved us money for storage. Two allowed us to bring all that stuff back from the UK and re barcode it. Re barcode it. Um, to clean up that. a lot of our mistakes. Yeah, to yeah. kind of like really, hey, we actually know what we're doing now. We've like done everything wrong, so we couldn't screw it up again. You know, sorry. You know, that was a foolproof plan. We were just gonna open this warehouse and then like. I'm pretty sure what they said is overnight, you just make a ton of sales and make a bunch of money. On Shopify? Yeah, that I think was that was the, the promise. Yeah. <laughs> like you just, you find the website and just boom, like sales happen. Like, that's, that's what the, all the gurus say. So, so we yeah. we launched our website and- Newsflash, that crickets, did happen. Crickets. But, so that, yeah, that did not happen overnight. That was, we always laugh now because if we would have just stuck with Amazon on a simpler version, it would have just been more hands-off. But then learning the website, realized what took a lot of time so then, uh, yeah. to invest into educating ourselves into what marketing actually is. I mean, Amazon is marketing now, especially, it's not, but it, it's not. <laughs> but it's really, especially at that time, you could put any, pretty much anything on Amazon and get it ranked and selling. And now I think it's, it, de it definitely takes a little bit more strategy, but Shopify or own, having your own website, uh, direct to consumer is where everything marketing comes into play. Facebook too. ads, email marketing, a whole new level of building a brand. Um, and that was like our goal because we went to um, Blue Ribbon and that's when we found out you could sell a business. We're like, that when we figured it out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember yeah. that part. But... No, because remember somebody offered to buy Live Infinitely? Oh, yeah. And we're like, what? no, no, this Miss is our no baby. baby. And then we went back to our bedroom and we're like at, a, at the hotel and like, should we, should yeah. we sell this thing? Like, that's a thing people do. And then I remember we asked Ezra, we're like, do people sell businesses? And he's like, oh yeah. He's like, do it, sell your business. Um, and so that got us really, our gears turning of like, we can build this to sell it. And at that point we realized that wasn't going to be like the exit we were, you know, hoping for. So we wanted to keep yeah. working. And at the time it was like, you wanted like a diversified revenue stream of Shopify and Amazon and um so. yeah it was everything at that point when you were going to sell or talking to anybody or what they were interested in is you know customer data they wanted essentially so they wanted to have your own 
web studies. You had to have stuff outside of Amazon. Amazon was going through a ton of changes. So even though you launched products, the ranking, the review strategy used to be easy, like mm -hmm. buy a hundred, give 50 away and sell the other 50. And, and like, yeah, that doesn't work anymore. But um but yeah, I, was, I don't remember what blue ribbon that was. Nashville, Nashville yeah. Like, yeah. It's in Nashville. So Nashville. I mean, it was a fun trip, but that kind of like, we had the warehouses at that point and I don't know, we had moved warehouses. Mind you, they're all in the same building per se, but we had like, we leased a warehouse, put the racking in, loaded it up and emptied it within the same month because we realized that we had already outgrown it, right? It was just such stupid stuff, but we were we're trying to save money. So we got a little warehouse. We tried to do the map. I mean, like to the point where like at one point the forklift had like six inches to the wall to make the turn. <laughs> so like there was zero room for air, but Hey, we could yeah. get a pallet in there. So there's some pictures of like the warehouse is being so full that we, again, you know, good thing we didn't have employees because OSHA would have probably been pissed off at us, but um, <laughs> similar stories. Well, hey, it's us. <laughs> but we didn't have employees. So yeah, we didn't have employees. It's just us. Um, All right. <laughs> but yeah, where we had to like crawl over the pallets, like you get on top of the pallet and then you would crawl six pallets deep to get a box that you needed or something like that. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, because then we, our hammocks are picking up on, like from Google ads and then we start packaging our own orders for our Shopify, Shopify sales. And anytime we'd sell something, right? Oh, now we need purple hammocks. And it was That's always it. in the wrong warehouse because they weren't even the same. The other warehouse. You had to like go outside, unlock the other one, crawl over and get it. And it was like, it was never like every order is awesome when you're that small, but it was never even like worth it. Like I have to go pick a, a $10 item, mm -hmm. you know, a, a half mile away. It felt like. Um, it felt like it, you're like running, like doing a mud race obstacle course to get this one hammock to bring back <laughs> into the packaging line. Just because we were just such a cluster with our small little warehouses. Um, yeah, we had like this little, like they call them a U-boat. It's a little uh, three shelf thing. And like, we got like 10, 15 packages on it, like taking pictures. Oh, like, we were thrilled. Yeah, like this we is the had, thing like, ever. We had little UPS or USPS boxes, like full of little packages. Yeah. And we'd, we'd roll it to the, to the guy or the mailman. And we're like, look at that, taking pictures, yeah, like thinking we just struck gold. To the point, like fast forward, like, you know, then that grew into two years, like the mail refused to pick up because their truck wasn't big enough. So they had to super nice it. guy. So then uh, we started getting dedicated trucks. We got like 26 or, or 30 foot box trucks that like- We'd roll the pallet jacks of boxes, those cartons just packed with orders yeah. at that point. It was, um, yeah, we had I, at least once we sent a full 26 foot, I think was it 16 or 18 pallets of just website orders for that the that's, previous day. That's one of my pictures. Um, I'm like, that was an exhausting day. Yeah. <laughs> that was so tiring, but so cool when it like loaded up the truck and you saw how many orders that was. Yeah. And it's all ours, ours. So yeah, it's crazy to think about because I mean it's it's just it's fun to celebrate those little wins because like the little U boat with little boxes and our orders and felt like the coolest thing. Cause when you finally get those first sales on your website, it just feels like it took us forever to get to that point, as yeah. opposed to Amazon. Amazon was like, we were able to get pick up on that quick. But and you never really saw the volume on Amazon, you know, like you, you the actual physical products, you know, going mm -hmm. out in the packages, we would send them in pallets. But um, yeah, I mean, everything was the, you know, kind of the grassroots from the pallet wrapper to like me or my grandpa or somebody out in the parking lot. Because again, warehouse spacing was so limited. We'd have to carry the pallet out into our center <laughs> parking lot to wrap it because we had just one of those pallet wrappers that you had like handheld ones yeah <laughs> pulling it around and around and around and then like finally one day we um when we got our, our bigger warehouse or our kind of mid-level one um where we got an automated machine and it was like pushback from somebody i'm not going to say who that uh <laughs> she wasn't going to get her workout in then but it's like yeah i don't care anymore i'm so tired and so busy so you could actually just sit it on there press go push a button and, and you know. wrap it put it in the truck, off it went. So it was, um, but yeah, we were, that was when we were doing all this, learning marketing, every course known to man that we could learn from that was, it was worth anything. Um, and unloading every single one of our containers. So like her aunt, which is uh, Anna. Anna, she's been around and Atira and- um, Anna moved in with us in 2018 when we opened our warehouse and um, was helping pack the orders and unload those containers. Um, I'm surprised she still likes us. But <laughs> the, <laughs> they were like 40 foot containers, or right? About yeah, like, well, yeah. Yeah, usually. And then you unload a box one by one of all these products. 
So anybody who hasn't actually ever seen their own products come in from China, like, it's a, which believe it or not, oh, more people have that than like we we are. Yeah, yeah. Every, everything came in floor loaded. So it was like 30, between 25 and 35,000 pounds of boxes. In like, case you're wondering why we're so rich. <laughs> So there was like, you know, I don't even know how many boxes and, and every one of them had to come out one by one by one. There'd be six, seven, eight hundred boxes in there to make up all that weight. So you have to take that box, stack it on a pallet, then, you know, then go rack that pallet somewhere. And um, I clearly had the hardest job there. And I was driving the forklift. Like, that was very unappreciated work. I mean, I just, you know, it was very difficult. I, I didn't have an air ride seat. Remember how I used to complain about that? Like, oh, guys, my butt hurts. I've been sitting here for a few hours and on and I are like, <laughs> like moving boxes one by one. But, but no, he shout out his fair share. He would then have to be out there packaging the orders most of the time with with everyone. The but. amount of people that helped throughout, like we had a neighbor that um, at the warehouse that they would come over some. Like we just recruit anybody, um, and the kids from our neighborhood kind of start working with us. Just like um, you know, high school kid uh, making them some side money, but Nana. But we had a lot of like, you know, we anybody who wanted to make a little extra money on container days, but it was generally the way this kind of work, like you can only have two or three people in it, much more than that. And you just, everybody's standing on top of each other, like. And mind you, this, we live in Florida. So yeah, these are 100 plus degree heat, you know, 100% yeah. humidity, summer days. Um, there was a few hours each container. We would do Sometimes two or three. we had multiple containers in a day. Yeah, it was nuts. And then it's not only unloading them, then you have to like juggle, because we eventually moved into how much square footage? Um, we got up to like, 18,000 total when we sold because they had two them. warehouses. They had a 10,000 foot warehouse and then, um, and then the 5,000 square foot. Yeah. So I guess no, it's that one 12. Maybe it's 16. I don't know. I don't I remember. think it's eight. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think because, well, that was 4,800. So five, just called five. Uh -huh. And then I think that other one was 10 or 12, but whatever, 15, 16 to 18,000 square feet, something along those lines. Well, and then we still had a little extra to the side. Remember? Huh? Uh, the one, the one in the first building that we were at, we still had that little side one for a long time too. Oh, that was not after, not when we had the big one. Oh, okay. It's impossible to track. I think we actually sat down and counted up one time. We had been in like, I don't know, seven, eight, nine warehouses. Yeah. At least. Um, or, and then like, we would have, um, sometimes like seasonal, we would just like lease space from somebody where we didn't need it the whole time. But yeah, it was, it was always, it was, we we're always hopping. That's for sure. But luckily yeah. the landlords we had here in, uh, for a really good and they have like millions of square feet so we could kind of move around their space with them and like if a tenant moved out we could get it for a couple months maybe till they leased it or mm -hmm. they were um, they were pretty good about it and, and helpful kind of you know where we were and um you know we moved into one of the new buildings that we needed all the space for but then it was delayed on the build and you know we kind of like had to just react and kind of do what what would work for us but um yeah. but anyway we got there we um we're doing everything is that so I was gonna we say so long story short it's like literally from the day we launched we've done everything inside of our business um from hand packing our first water bottles to inspecting those the the errors that happened with those water bottles to building our own little hammock hanging kits piecing together yeah. um to packaging those to restickering to bringing our inventory in and unloading them by hand to like racking them to packing our orders to learning about marketing like we were just no life remember when I, <laughs> we like were so conflicted with marketing and sales because a really good sales day and good marketing like you're excited that's awesome <laughs> but on the same fold when you've been looking ship station and you have 300 orders to pack you're just like it was this weird like conflicting because obviously we're in this to make sales and make Mm -hmm. money but then when you're like dead tired you just unload a container and it's like oh well cool now there's however many orders to um uh we do. Have hundreds in a day today especially mondays mondays were just yeah. the weekend stacked up and monday we'd go into sometimes we'd go in sundays to get ahead yeah pack, but it was hundreds. um it was always it was it was always i guess because we always would take that money and then like anything that we would save by not hiring it was like adding more product like we started this whole thing with like five or ten thousand dollars so we never with cash flow and these style businesses and like when we're talking about containers there would easily be a quarter million dollars of product in a container that we were you know and, and as we grew we got better terms with suppliers and I learned to like kind of negotiate with them and utilize them a little bit more but you know some of the stuff you're paying for 
we're putting a large deposit on well in advance and tooling costs and like when we got to that scale um it was it was always getting reinvested back into the business like we were like either bumming off of our roommate like living with him or like that's just yeah we hit I don't know I think I had it in our timeline over two million in our first year um in our first was it yeah 2016 by November 2016 we had achieved 2.5 million in revenue and we still lived like bums uh, we were like so had the old iPhone I didn't even have we had the same car we had one car that was I had from years that was like falling apart as we were driving down the road it's just not, not talk shit on the car and right? it was a good car okay? it was such a little yeah it, it got was... us where we needed to go but we had one car and old phones we lived with a roommate for so many years with a multi-million dollar business because we were just so um focused on growth, on growth. I mean, it was, every it was penny we had went right back into or learning it. like buying marketing courses or trying something like spending money on facebook and not knowing like now what we know now that process could have been cut by like uh, years. it means <laughs> like knowing what we know now and like it was live infinitely was always a high volume low margin business and like, that's the other thing we didn't have a lot extra to invest in in health it's either invest in hiring or invest in growth and that was like we're learning we're learning and learning and um so we invested in growing and learning as much as we could yeah so and it's um it's definitely made it worth it it's helped us you know along the way and, and where we are now but it was definitely um different times and you see businesses now or even some that we work with currently or have in the past and stuff it's like oh that's what that's like when you have a good, a margin good margin or like um you know different even low skew count there's advantages to all the different stuff but yeah you're like huh it's it, you, we've learned so much and and we learned then like we wouldn't go back and change it it made us who we are and got us to where we are mm -hmm. but the workload um yeah it's I think um and it's it's you know it's really kind of paid off but it's one thing that I Chad was definitely the emotional stability throughout all of this <laughs> because I would have my waves of emotion where this is so hard like I miss my family like all these things but like when I look back on that being so involved in every single part of our business is why we are we can do what we do today cool. like we no marketing we know logistics warehousing we had to cut all expenses as much as we could on shipping and fulfillment and warehousing and so when it comes to maximizing profitability shad's the king <laughs> he's the king of profitability um and then i was able to learn email marketing and facebook and like we just by being so involved like we now have the like skill sets that we can take on to anything that we do that's true physical you know retail locations or for those it's like or you know online stuff it you know some of the same principles go you know back and forth but I just realized like we really didn't even talk about our warehouse security I mean that was the best thing when we got the warehouse is I could finally get my dogs back guys uh <laughs> yeah miles and rocky so if you if you would show up to our warehouse it was going to be the same thing we were going to be sweaty and dirty. I was going to have a hat backwards and it's there were disgusting. going to be two dogs that were going to meet you, big old boxers that were going to meet you at the door the second you walked in. So, but it yeah. was, um, Our sweet boxers. It was, it was fun, but everybody knew. And again, the landlords were phenomenal. They never gave us pushback and they would they'd roam the warehouse or, you know, they were, uh, mm -hmm. they were just super good with them. I like, so. I do take pride in my cleanliness. Like I like to be a clean person, but if you would have showed up to the warehouse, container days that did so container much days there was boxes because we'd be packaging moving things around we were sweaty and and gross our our where our office had dog pens and our security and stuff but we were just uh yeah we were in the grind yeah. at that point it'd take us you know all the garbage afterwards all the boxes and packaging materials and all that stuff is really what she's mm -hmm. talking about like it, it was uh <laughs> that was the best thing when like we had Anna or um Merrick with us like where we could just be done after all the orders were picked and packaged and we could be like hey break down all the boxes and then we'd have to get <laughs> more and more dumpsters or recycling containers out there because we had so much card so many we had boxes a cardboard empire at one point of just because they would come in a case of 50 
and then um you know each individual box would come out of that so it was just like things that you don't think of when you're like you don't see your your sales going out of amazon like it became a problem we couldn't get rid of enough cardboard because how much how many boxes we were going through i think for- that really was the, i mean you kind of mentioned it before but that was the big shock to us is all these years we were doing millions of dollars in revenue on amazon and then once the products came to us that was that first moment where like holy shit, <laughs> like that's a lot of product and a lot of boxes and a lot, a lot to do to move that much product. Yeah, with no context like, of like what comes in a container, 40 foot, like, you know, and for a reference of 40 foot shipping container in most tractor trailers are 53 feet, but as tightly as they pack those shipping containers so with the floor loads, you, like if we would bring one 40 foot container in floor loaded, and then you would put that on pallets and wrap it. You would maximize these pallets to the, you know, the biggest size Amazon was. That's at least three truckloads out of there. Mm-hmm. So like you're talking about this 40 foot just jam back container that would go out of the warehouse with 72 pallets. That would be three tractor trailers. No idea. Didn't understand that. Didn't, I don't even know if we knew they were coming for. I legitimately think when we cut open our first container is when we realized that there was no pallets. No pallets yeah. Like I don't know how we didn't think of that or ask that or like understand that. I still remember that that first one. And we didn't even know we had to cut them open. They come with this real heavy bolt kind of lock, you know, security lock come across the waters. Uh-huh. And luckily, the 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 first truck driver who delivered had the cutters in the truck. We're like, what is this thing? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, that I was, do this. and we were idiots for, no, we unloaded the first container, and this is, you know, ridiculous to think that we were at this phase at one point, or we went through this, but we didn't even have a dock, so we weren't dock high, we had to unload it into the parking lot, mm-hmm. um, and again, you know, Florida always needs to be remembered, the, <laughs> the container was, the doors opened into the sun, so um, we sat there in bay yeah, in Florida the in right. like July. <laughs> we were a lemon toaster oven. In July. And yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we got down and laid in the floor. I think there were, I know there were hammocks. That was the first container we unloaded. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it was all fun and a ton of learning. And I think the second container, the starter went out of the forklift after I had it serviced. I took it, you remember? Yeah. And they're like, oh, it's fine. And then it quit working. Yeah. I think that's actually how we met Mike, our neighbor. Was what yeah, it was I, I think I went borrowed his forklift or something. I think so. Yeah. But yeah. anywho, um, so it was, yeah, tons of crazy, every bit of those could be a story in its own of like some of the stuff we've seen. That's what I'm saying. Like there's a thousand podcast episodes we could go into oh. on this <laughs> with all of our stories. It's just, it's absolutely nuts. But that was like the, that was like really when we were focused. We're like, I mean, we were focused all those years, but we're like, we are building to sell. We're heads down, whatever it takes. Um, the next few years are strictly dedicated to this. And that was really hard for sure for a lot of years because we didn't leave the state of Florida from 2018 until we sold really. Yeah. Like it was just like head down, buckle in and let's get to work. And um, before that, we were kind of at least traveling, still going to Hawaii when we were just doing Amazon. But but that's what we knew the ultimate goal was to sell the business. That was like what we wanted to do. And if this is what it took, you know, a few years, three years then at the warehouse, 18, 19, 20, 21, four years. Four years. <laughs> four years of, yeah, four years at the warehouse every single day. Um, and we couldn't miss a day because who's going to package the orders? Yeah. And then at Shopify, like, took off in 2019. That's when we, like, really yeah. figured it out. Because 2018, we just opened up the warehouse. We were just getting some sales through Google Ads, essentially. And then um, I learned Facebook ads in uh, the spring of 2019. And- I remember it was always, that was the answer. It was like, uh, everybody's done some level of this. But, like, you just say, oh, when I take that course, it will we'll do good or whatever. And, like, remember the one day... Um, like we're just about to turn the ads on and that was always the excuse like the website will grow we've done all this work we've done everything that we needed Mm -hmm. we're going to turn these ads on and we're going to grow and then we'll be a real you know business we'll be on amazon and off amazon and remember just saying like what if this doesn't work yeah we were so committed and so deep at that (laughs) there was no other option (laughs) i don't think we actually considered what happens if this doesn't work no but um 
Yeah, and it um, didn't at first. I mean, just no. It took time. I mean, we tries. I think we officially opened our Shopify website, um, launched it in 2017 ish. But you know, not but really like a theme or anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. And then, we're, then we we but... did the website. We did the website, the new theme in 2017. Believe it or not, like when the loungers and stuff were out. But we hadn't learned Facebook yet. We hadn't learned Google. Um, we were just getting a few sales, but we were still focused on like cleaning up our chaos of Amazon and and you know fixing that and so it was 2019 that like I think throughout 2018 we were seeing like really good growth and that's when we were taking those little dolly carts to the mailman all super proud but then 2019 is when um the volume hit yeah. for the warehouse and packaging and that was like where where we became a 95 percent Amazon store or business to like about 50, 30 50. probably 30 I'd say 30 35 because we were still growing into it. Because remember, we were camping. Well, what did we end at 50-50, would you say? When we sold. When we sold. Yeah, 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 yeah. when we sold the business. Yeah, we were. But it was like, it, in 19, it hadn't fully bounced. Oh, no, no, no. We were so, still, yeah, like 30% on Shopify, 70% on Amazon or so. And, yeah. So after all of this, like every mistake possible, all of this stuff, like we were camping. It was me, her, and Miles, one of our boxers. Um, January of 2020. Yeah, January 2020. And anybody who's been around knows that something big happened in 2020, but we're camping and um, they were like, just pretty much saying, oh, wow, like this all worked out. Like this is going good. Like we're consistent. We got containers coming. Like our logistics are planned out for the next six, nine months. Like everything was lined up and I wake, wake up the next day and we had an email from one of our suppliers, our major supplier that said, um, that the factory would be shutting down for something like something called COVID. COVID. <laughs> and initially, right, again, yeah, January, 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 or like, um, you know, it's kind of not abnormal at all. Um, obviously, stuff happens, but it's not abnormal at all for China to come up with some excuse why their container is going to be delayed. Like, you know, um, and sometimes it's just overproduction or, you know, you're coming, you're approaching Chinese New Year, all that sort of thing. So I just had thought like, oh, this is going to be like, they're going to be a week late on the shipping date or something like that. Mm -hmm. like, if I would have known know. now, we would, you know, short of the market and have Honestly. a good old time there. But um, you had a, you had a forecast. <laughs> we, had, we saw the future. Zero idea what was coming with COVID. So yeah. um, anyhow, that container got delayed. And then, you know, a few short months later, we're having the question, we're sitting there saying, oh, can we even go to the warehouse? Like, is it like, you know, the roads and remember how you have the work order or whatever? And we're like, well, actually, we don't care. We're in Florida. So we actually believe in freedom. So we said, <laughs> we're going to the warehouse. And obviously that all worked out. And, you know, Florida was super supportive of like businesses at that time. Like there was no. Yeah. Um, so we, we were able to still operate. Exactly. That, um, that went well. And you know no issues there but and we actually did get containers and and then um anybody in any in business at that time it was either it was very polarizing it was either really good for your business or really bad there was a lot of people that were like physical businesses shut down and there were some really kind of short sticks that were dealt during that time frame to businesses chad but, and i are not lucky people at all it's like we've been we dealt with a lot of things lawsuits a bunch of stuff but like with that that we're very, very fortunate to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah, that we can have kind of, I feel so always terrible with people that were had a bunch of debt and or restaurants or tied up in that. Like, um, luckily we were, you know, we were online. So, and and we were in a space that still stayed busy. So um, fitness and health, you know. And, so it, that was like. Um, well, yeah. and then, I mean, then in January, 2020 is when, when we launched the Water Warriors too. Oh, and, yeah, January 2020 and so uh, that was when we launched our community that um, you know that we ended up building that really helped us grow and it's 20 January 2020 I was so scared uh, but then of, of what this would become but it kind of was like like the thing that because at, at that time people were craving community feeling all isolated you right. know so it became something that was like unintentionally like a built, per the time. A built perfect for that yeah. moment where like we kind of built this community of women that could be there for each other in such a hard time. And so that really was helpful for that and taking that off and, and having something where we could come together and, and share goals. And but yeah, that's, yeah. That's yeah I didn't realize that was January, 2020. January, 2020. Yeah. yeah. I know it's crazy. 
Um, and so, yeah, that's what, that's what took that off. Um, and I mean, communities still, you can build at any time, but I think because it was important then, you know, people were looking for community, but it still always be important. When did we have our first, um, so obviously through 19, we're growing, we're kind of getting closer to that balance of the 50, 50, we were trying to achieve 2020. It really, um, kind of, we really did go 50, 50 at that point. Some of it mm -hmm. was just because like, you couldn't get product to Amazon or it was delayed or, you know, and, and it was just like, and at that time it was like, she really kind of even like late 19, really Facebook was firing on all cylinders for us, you know, oh, yeah. before any of the COVID stuff happened. All of 19, it was like, bloop, and, and then COVID just kept it going or 2020 really. So, and it was, um yeah. When was the first time that we met with Chris? You remember that? That's a good question. He just told us the other day did he? that yeah, he, he found did. the email, and I think it was um like early 2019 or 18. Was it 18? I don't know. We're gonna have to check. We're gonna fact check that. We're gonna have to fact check. I, <laughs> I don't remember. I I was thinking 19 sometime, but um I think early 2019. Some point maybe. we'll have to find that one out for sure. But in sometime in 19, I'm pretty confident where we mm -hmm. actually um had uh contacted the broker who and inevitably ended up selling our business. We um talked to a couple of different people and, you know, really started to kind of learn that space because we had learned marketing, we learned, so we're just trying to understand that. How does that work? And, and, um, what are the important things to do to position your business for the best valuation and the, the best exit? And so we, yeah, we met with him. We knew we wanted to sell, but we were looking into who yeah. could help us. And that's a hard decision to make because yeah. it's like, it's, it's so much more emotional than I ever thought it would be, you know, selling your business and going through that and finding somebody that you can actually trust and help with your expectations and really walk through things uh, with you. So we looked at a few brokers um, yeah. before we really met Chris. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was, it was good because it was kind of realized that we had to kind of update our accounting. And that's when I then had to go learn all the QuickBooks. It's, again, we could have just hired an accountant, but um, why would you do that when I need to understand all this? I need to know it. So it was kind of like now, yeah, we can have an account or we can have you know different people, but it's like we've always just been on the mindset like we want to understand it and know that way. If so, we hire somebody, we can know if they're doing a good job or not. So or mm -hmm. know if you know even to give them direction. So, um, but yeah, we spent that time through nineteen and twenty really just kind of shaping the business where we wanted it to exit from or where we wanted to, uh, to grow it as much as we could, but really um, just, you know, bookkeeping and logistics. And um, so where it, somebody could come in and be a turnkey business where they pick it up and, and ideally grow it and, you know, continue kind of what we started, but yeah. knowing much bigger than that was outside of our wheelhouse at the time, because we were hired, we, you know, 18,000, square feet of warehouse 16 50 whatever it ended up was like mm -hmm. we didn't want more we just were like all right this is kind of this is big enough for us like that's let's... been one of the biggest questions that people have asked me um was like why would you have sold like why'd you sell at that time then and it was kind of like we knew our capacity was, was here yeah, we and just... we went here yeah. <laughs> we maxed out our capacity and so to take it to the next level we would need to learn to hire people and build out systems and processes and we were just like nah <laughs> like we're ready we'll like we'll let somebody take it to the next level but we this was our capacity and we surpassed that big time um and we were happy with where we got it to and we didn't want to have to hire and get bigger warehouses and, and and stuff like that so that has been one of my biggest questions people always ask it was so um it was so weird after we like kind of got it to the point where we we're ready to sell it it was just um uh chris had kind of it is just fantastic through the whole process and we kind of updated you know and, and understood where we were and stuff that one day we're just like kind of all we're talking we're like do we list this thing now <laughs> like did we we never really we didn't have a number or an exact date or we didn't have a like this is what we're waiting for until we list the business um it was kind of a an all-encompassing trying to achieve you know everything and we finally got to that point and it's like it almost is like when you 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 know i don't know video game you beat the boss or you like go and run and you finish or something you're done you're like well what now yeah, like, yeah. You know, it was it was always the target but we never i don't say we didn't think we would ever get there but we just didn't ever think okay once we get there then what do we do mm -hmm. so it was it was kind of um crazy to actually um see the the offering memorandum that we got like hey essentially our business that we built or the thing that we spent the last however many years for it was seven at that time seven years was mm -hmm. for sale and it was like surreal but it was exciting because that was the whole goal that yeah. was the entire 
since we learned that you could sell a business and kind of our um, our targets. Um, yeah, so it was really cool to actually hit that point. It was, and it was, this is where Shad and I, uh, he almost divorced me. We're not even married, but um, yeah, but I was like, do we sell it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> we spent all <laughs> of this. Like, and we grew the community and I fell in love with them and I loved what I was doing and I felt very like purposeful and like helping these women set goals and drink water and like live infinitely became exactly what we had set out for it to become where we helped remind people to live their life with infinite possibilities and the mission was strong and I was it was like when the when the time came to it and your baby is on the market it's like sending your kid off to school or college you're like wait <laughs> and I was like Shad what do we do this still like and Shad looked at me and he's like are you kidding me because <laughs> it, it, it's a hard and I mean I don't know if you were emotional I was very emotional but um but it was, it was, it's what we planned to do. Um, that, that was the goal, you know? And so some people think best in the shower or doing whatever, like, you know, everybody has their kind of like their headspace that, you know, they get their best ideas. Ours is on a golf cart. Like we neighborhood we live in and the dog back there, Mr. Remy going crazy, but we had uh, the boxers that time, but every night, um, or at least a couple times a week, we would go cruise the neighborhood with the dogs on the golf cart. And it's just like the fresh air and just like being together, the dogs happy as could be one off each side or, you know, whatever. And so we were cruising on the golf cart that night. And she's like, I don't know if I'm ready to sell. And I'm like, we just spent years getting all of this. It's like, are you out of your mind? But it's but like short lived. And she like kind of realized that, yeah, that is the goal, but it, it is, it's hard but then when you think of like what you were able to accomplish and it gave us our time back it gave us freedom for time uh, it, and yeah. pursue things that you know obviously we're here we didn't walk away from business we love it and, and that's kind of what, where we live but um it was just being able to like kind of restart almost and take all of start with a clean slate and that's what yeah. was um so exciting because then we could it, it went truthfully back to where the opportunities are endless like so we got the money and we sold the business for we have now this like education of years and years that people would pay um really a fortune to just download some of the stuff that we've learned like download our brains it's, <laughs> it's like you know you, you try 10 things nine fail and, and that one it's not necessarily that one because everybody has the secret sauce but it's like even there's every, you know, quote unquote failure, you learn something from it, like, oh, yeah. um, whether it's like logistics or like, or in advertising or marketing or, and all of that stuff changes, even marketing changes where stuff that failed six months ago might work now. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you kind of, you just kind of all that data and we were able to move forward on a clean slate. Like we, so Newsflash shocker, better. we decided to sell. We <laughs> actually got yeah, okay. pursue that. Um, Chad, like I've said a few times, Chad's always, I mean, that's just men too, but emotional rock, you know, throughout this whole thing, being able to take half a million dollar loans, prepare the business for a sale, everything that was super scary and super intense, like couldn't have done it without Chad. <laughs> like there's just no way. And so, um, yes, he won that battle. It wasn't a hard argument because that's what we were preparing to uh, to do. But it, when you do actually prepare your business for a sale, it becomes, it, it can be emotional because you build a business that is you, you know, like that is your passion. Um, and then when you, when you go to sell it, it feels like, who are we now? You know, when we sold, it was like, we could finally breathe. I think that's the best we slept like in seven years, you know, the day it closed, we're like, we can yeah. sleep. We still have to run the warehouse for a few months and consult and help them out and do all that stuff. Uh -huh. But even like going to the warehouse and knowing that like three months, 24 days, seven hours and 13 minutes from now, I don't have to do this again. You know, like I wasn't that specific. Like <laughs> seconds, minutes, what's really countdown. But uh it was, freedom. Yeah, where we just like, but then if that was exciting, everything was great, you know, get the deposit and the account, like it was loved it. But then like it was the, that's the only time I was ever even sad about the whole thing is like tearing the last racking down, forklifts uh -huh. gone. Like, it was a very surreal. <laughs> the, probably the most, like, like where you have to just stand back and look at it is like, you know, we didn't own the warehouse, we just leased a space. But, uh, you know, like Toys R Us or every single business that oh like, my gosh. goes out of business, like, 
a spirit Halloween moved into our warehouse. Into our warehouse right? Like, is this first? Yeah, right. <laughs> is this an omen? Like, I don't even know. Like, yeah, it was true. ironically funny, but um, it was weird though. The day that we packed it up, it was like August, August in 2021. So we sold in May, and we had to like keep warehousing until August. How many trucks did we sell or send? 20 or 30 tractor trailers. Yeah, all the inventory we had to send to the new owners and just pack it all up. And the buyers were on, they didn't really plan that out properly. Like we're talking like the night of when the when our lease was done at the warehouse, the last truck was going out. Yeah. Like, and they knew about it for months and they just, you know. It's a lot of work to get that. Um, then we swapped, switched off the light switch to the warehouse for the last time. Yeah. and That was the only thing, okay. like actually knowing that, because um, we had, at this point, we had lost uh, one of our dogs. Um, yeah. Uh, Rocky, and he, yeah, he so, passed there too. Yeah, at the warehouse. Um, just, just very senior and great dog. But um, so it was like, just like you know so many so memories many happen there so many memories um, of like happiness sadness anger everything in between like it was just yeah so many so much of our life um because we spent like from sun up to sundown for years we had a grill there because <laughs> yeah, we, grill. Lived, we drove an hour each way to our warehouse before and we, we moved cooked dinner at yeah we would cook dinner there we yeah. would we would sleep there we would sleep um we both slept on concrete floors at the warehouse we slept our hammocks a time or two from our from from our racking so we slept in our hammocks and i'm not like, far like just because you're just yeah. beat like you would you know an hour yeah or, or like yeah it was, so it was just everything kind of wrapped up like the last you know seven eight years um had wrapped up and it was it was exciting but it was also when that switch went off for the last time it was just like well now because i mean that was yeah. you know 60 hours a week like what do you do now so we were um uh really just kind of i don't say lost but you almost feel like going into retirement it's where you're, crisis. yeah where you just said well what do we do now so i've talked to some other people that sold and it feels like such a such a uh I don't know, a weird problem to complain about because it's not even like complaining, but you're like, your whole identity is different. And it's like what you woke up and lived for and and what you like aim for every single day is, is now gone. And so you have to like find that new thing. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just a really weird feeling because um, it, it is, we were so happy. Like that was it. That's what we worked for. The happiness surpassed everything. But then a few weeks into it, you're like, what do we do? <laughs> like we're so young, we're so like we don't want to just sit here and be like idle and not do anything. And but the excitement, like, is what really. I mean, at first, you know, it's that quick, but then it turned into excitement because we like went back and and truthfully realized like we had the money from selling, we had the education, and it was like we could do whatever we wanted. Yeah. Like it was like to this like confusion of like, well, I guess we don't have to go to the warehouse today. Like, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. And then it was like we can do whatever we want, like mm -hmm. anything. We could travel, we could start a new business, we could help anybody, like whatever we wanted to do. Like it was like cliche, but like it, the possibilities were endless. It was like really, very, very exciting. That's the first time, obviously, in either one of our lives to have that level of freedom. And, and we like, even with Live Infinite, as we were growing it, like you just always had a, a time commitment. So we got our, mm -hmm. our time back with, with all of that. So... Yeah, that was, um, and we like loved the selling process. We truthfully enjoyed that. Um, like, you know, the, with anything, there's ups and downs, but that was uh, not really indicative of the sales process, more of just like the business at that time, you know, just mm -hmm. you, we're wearing all these hats. But I think that's where Chris um, really, I mean, that's probably where, where we both just gained so much respect for him because he kind of like helped us, helped us through that process. Uh -huh. And like, it was, um, I'm sure we were probably basket case clients. <laughs> we felt calm, but he, he probably we were calm. So <laughs> but, uh, no, I'm sure we, we probably thought we were calm for sure. But no, Chris was absolutely wonderful because it's like the expectations and and what and how much you can sell for to when you'll sell by to like how long is this going to close? What's the process like? Um, yeah, that's just why he became one of our closest friends in our life. Like he knows us more intimately than a lot of people because of all the emotions yeah that... seen every side of um of that so it was yeah so we just got extremely lucky and then um yeah just stayed in touch with them like obviously i mean i remember when we were traveling so oh we sold and we decided our next kind of thing um we really started traveling 
Um, <laughs> oh, somebody's getting some FaceTime. <laughs> hey, Storm. He's Come like, are who, when are we talking about me? <laughs> we're going to into the picture. We started to do some traveling, and then I yeah, we got in. our moment. That was our big reward for ourselves. So yeah. Like, let's let's celebrate. Let's go make memories. Let's get out of Florida. As much we love Florida, let's get out and and travel and, and do things together. And so yeah, we spent the year. Um, spent a year traveling, working, consulting, kind of helping because we had all this knowledge and we had like the experience and and we actually enjoy it. Like we genuinely enjoy business and even like the living it. stuff. Yeah. The only thing that we ever like really wanted gone was the, the warehouse. warehouse. <laughs> the, the, like, I mean, that was just an ungodly amount of physical work and not that we're lazy, but like. And, and physical just, um, restriction or location restriction. We were yeah. stuck here. And so, yeah, so we traveled and then we, you know, we stayed in, um, in touch with Christy, you know, the entire time. So, well, I mean, we, you and I were both starting on our next things before we even really like sold and like we both knew like with all this education and knowledge we had. Um, that's when like I spoke at Blue Ribbon and then kind of started going down the road of challenge makers to help people build communities like we had built. Um, and then we were like working on different things like that, and that's kind of how we evolved into. <laughs> Hi, Rem. Okay, you can sit there. Okay, you can sit there. <laughs> That's kind of how we evolved in, evolved into what we're doing today. You know, which is um, <laughs> which is playing with room. No. <laughs> no, I know it's about my turn. But yeah, so that's kind of what really launched uh, of impact or a version of it. That's yeah, because we were helping other entrepreneurs, and and it was really fulfilling and cool for us the past two years to see these business owners and like what we had done like create meaningful businesses of impact where you're like serving your customers better or even just impacting your own life better as an entrepreneur by like building out more financial freedom and so that's what we that's how we developed that name because so, i love cheesy names um but it's like it's it's we want to help people uh create meaningful in their life and in their customers lives and in the businesses that they create and build and uh, that was the whole concept of Live Infinitely, you know, to help people live their life with infinite possibilities, chase after their dreams, and that fulfillment, and by helping other people, like, it really did help our business grow in so many ways and brought us a whole new level of fulfillment, um, and it's just been cool for us to see. <laughs> okay. it's enjoyable, like, some of the people that we've met or businesses we've worked with, like, we both just genuinely like business, like, it's a, um, it's an interest for us, so, like, there's businesses on day one we were going in and look at something and within an hour like oh here's going to be a big win for this person like mm -hmm. um some logistic stuff and like but then it's also just hearing their stories hearing like um kind of where they were where they got to like it's legitimately just a fun space like we don't go out to bars or generally like you know do that like <laughs> but if you were like hey there's like 10 business owners you can go talk to like it's genuinely oh, yeah, it's enjoyable out. and yeah it's, it's been yeah, and that's honestly just like we started talking about why we found love because it was like our relationship started on business and entrepreneurship, yeah. and that was like how we became a couple and how we developed our relationship as friends and everything else like that. So it's just like that's just who we are, you know. Most people are like, oh, I couldn't work with my spouse, and that's absolutely the same. You know, there's certain people that way, and for us, it's like abnormal like or when we were traveling in the motorhome uh everybody said don't you get sick of each other and like side by side yeah okay. it's funny and it's we actually do better like we're in the same office like it's mm -hmm. just because we can bounce ideas off of each other like what starts as a small idea bounces back and forth five or six times and we're really excited because it's morphed into something that like neither of us on our own came up with um but where we took it so it's like we actually genuinely genuinely enjoy it and the um so yeah it's kind of a way for us to continue to work together um but and, and just continuing working off of like our brains just work differently i'm a I numbers see, guy she's a creative I was about person to say, so. he is 100 percent the left brain and i'm the right brain and together we make a perfect brain <laughs> or um, close to at least yeah, nothing's so. perfect but it's yeah it's like we just complement each other so well and when it comes to business and Shad's always been like the the rock the visionary the like emotional stability through what the riskiness of business and I've been you know the dreamer and the creative and uh come up with different things and then we execute together and what are you smiling so you're finally actually going to admit that I was the real CEO 
I know we've had that debate all of these years. We're like, I'm the CEO. And he's like, no, Alicia, I'm the CEO. And I'm like, whatever. And yeah, no, Shad's, I've admitted it before for sure. Shad's definitely the CEO and always has been. She just had one more question. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh... no, but it's just like the Shad comes in and he can like see things and he's very like business savvy and like vision there. I keep saying that word, but that's the best word I can think of. When you see products, you see um, profitability, opportunities, all those kind of things. And I come in with the community idea or, you know, different ideas and marketing and how can we grow this? And so I'm the unofficial CMO, but <laughs> that's kind of how we work off of each other where he'll come in, I'll execute and be doing things. Chad can come in and like quantify it and say like, okay, this worked good. Let's try this. And then we'll do it together. And and it works out usually, not always, but usually. We, oh, we it's pretty... worked out. We've both failed at something, but then you just go back and we do it again, again, again it's, until it works. Yeah, it's yeah like, that's true. It's been, um, so we've always, it's been the hot debate between friends and everybody, you know, jokes are around. It's always a joke, but yeah. Um, but yeah, we just, we generally work good together. We enjoy it. But anyhow, so we, we've really, really enjoyed where we've, what we've been able to do with businesses and, and the clients we've had growing them, answering questions or just seeing like, um, kind of like what we wanted to bring to this is just a different approach. We, at one point, I had one agency um, to try, you know, something to offload it back in the day. And like, they did at best, okay. You know, it was it was one of those where they weren't bad enough where we were going to fire them for like what we were having them run and being big because I don't want to like mm -hmm. talk shit on them. Mm -hmm. But um, they were good enough. But like you could tell like the second the call was done, they probably had another meeting in 15 minutes with somebody else. And like, mm -hmm. we kind of like, that's what, uh, it's not as good for, you know, honestly us, like we don't have a, it's just an unlimited amount of clients we take on, but it's actually very, it's much more enjoyable because it's the personability and actually getting to work with brand owners, like one-on-one -on -one, um, mm -hmm. and seeing the stuff. So that's been really, really good where we've actually been able to be very involved with them. Yeah. Um, learn the businesses, like, every one all of them that we have now I know like every single keyword yeah you know every single campaign like we just genuinely care it's just the only way we know how to run a business it's is, truthfully is being fully involved um and so that's why we yeah we have a limited amount of those types of clients mm -hmm. that we can come in and help run their businesses but we do that because it's a very 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 involved process but we've made some we, of the best possible friends along fun. the way doing that and just um uh, if we've since, you know, taken equity positions in businesses and like, mm -hmm. just like it, it feels like, um, like, you know, some of them partners like that, uh, have been around forever. Like, you know, them forever, but really like you haven't, but it's just, yeah. it, it's felt really, really good. Now business and entrepreneurship. That's why I love it. And we love it. It's like the, what you can create out of nothing is the coolest thing you know, friendships, relationships, businesses, communities, like entrepreneurship allows you to create what you want in the world. And um, that's just what we, once we sold, we knew we wanted to keep building. Like we both love creating and finding new opportunities and building on things. And it's just been really, really fun. But I think we have a really good understanding of, you know, multiple things, business, but the one area that we both are so intrigued with and, and really, really enjoyed that new by no means are not going to say we're the expert in the space is the, the broker side. The selling the business. So yeah. that's like kind of where of impact and the um, impact advisors come in. It's like genuinely we, we met a lot of different uh, brokers and um, had, you know, meetings and um, even family who sold businesses. So just even different spaces and stuff, but um, we just have enjoyed working with, uh, Chris just and that will be so much actually our next episode where we'll have Chris come on because Chris spoiler alert is the partner now in of impact did we say that already no that's no. what I was getting to oh. like where it spoiler was alert. Like, <laughs> just there it is. but uh no it's it's um because we you know when we do something we, we really want to do it the best that we possibly can and it was um uh, truthfully just fortunate timing for for us that mm -hmm. like um um Chris was looking to yeah, I mean, just in perfect timing. It was really just uh, mm -hmm. where we were kind of like kind of thinking about this. And then Chris was looking for different, um, you know, just kind of do something a little different space and um, being able to like partner with him and let him uh, just, you know, the advisor side is is really him. Like, and it's, and he'll be able to do 
um, exactly what he's done for so many brands. And that's what's really cool about Love Impact is there's really nothing else like it where um, we have the capacity and ability to help businesses grow and scale. We've done it with our own business. Now we've done it with dozens of others. And Chris has the ability to help you position in uh, your business for a meaningful exit. And so as with us as partners now with his skill sets and um, experience and our skill sets and experience, we'll be able to help so many entrepreneurs like us when we were in 2019-ish and talk to Chris, what do we, how do we position this first? How, what do we do? Um, now we can come in and help businesses actually coach them and mentor them and clean up their profitability because that's what you're keying at and just different things like that. And then Chris can help take it home and um, hopefully position for a great exit. So, yeah, so that's the, that's the goal is where we're going to, what we, um, and we got one that we're actively working with on this entire phase. I have multiple clients now, but um, where it's like actually growing the business into the, the target the for sale so, yeah. um, and where you can actually have everybody um, on the team to actually achieve that where it's not most um, advisor firms or brokerages that have zero concept or zero actual ability in marketing Experience. or any track record yeah. um, for that matter or even you know it's a simple everybody can come up with some one-liners from textbooks about oh you know increase this or um, you know just go well go to Facebook or go to Google but really not a single bit of an understanding of it. So that's where we um, kind of differentiate ourselves where we mm -hmm. um, can really kind of help that through, whether it's, you know, three months away or, or two years away or, or for us, like two or three years. Mm -hmm. But um, so, yeah, so we're yeah. really, really excited. And and like she said, on the uh, the next episode, we we really want to introduce Chris and kind of interview him and his, um, his background. And it's funny because we learned yeah, <laughs> you know, so much about, uh, the space and 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 yeah, we're just could not be luckier to have partnered with somebody like that. And um, oh yeah, just uh, genuinely, we're we're excited. And and out of everything that we've ever done besides adopting Remy, I mean, it's not no <laughs> besides yeah. that, um, this is really truthfully probably the most uh, excited we've been about any one project just because it the ability to just help a lot of people yeah it sounds to, really, yeah but we'll definitely dive into a lot of the details and introduce you guys to chris and walk through that whole process on the next episode but i think i think that was a good uh, he's summary. like oh, you covered me. Yep. he's like so i'm he, ready for a walk now <laughs> we uh, adopted him last i think november, november. from uh, great dane rescue here in florida and uh mm -hmm. yeah this has been phenomenal but yeah the point of these podcasts we're excited kind of like um, introduce Chris on the next one um, and then just really just kind of focus on different topics that we you know have, have went through or business owners are probably going to have questions on or some of the stuff that we went through. I was going to say as you can there. see we've made a lot of mistakes yeah. and had a lot of wins so, and, and we anticipate sharing that with you guys and hopefully you can learn from our mistakes and um, what we've done that works and doesn't work and um, there's a lot of people too that we've came across over the last few years that have been um, just really either they're very very good in their space or just have such a unique story that we actually uh, plan on bringing uh, come on come on buddy <laughs> a few more minutes a few more minutes buddy we um, plan on bringing on and interviewing and kind of talking to you guys that have just been like you know the first time we talked to you we just like you feel like just a, a layer was pulled back of like understanding a topic so they're they're um, each in their own right are are absolutely experts on their topic so um yeah just excited to be able to share that and lots um, of really cool things yeah. in the future for sure and just want to help more more and more entrepreneurs um you know i feel like uh, there's a lot of information out there but i think if we can take the past 10 years of our lives and, and kind of pass it along it'll be fun yeah that's kind of our, our plan for the future so so yeah okay. if you guys have you know ever questions um you know of impact.com like genuinely uh reach out we have so many different things on there um yeah we're excited to see how this goes where this goes and yeah we appreciate you guys and definitely feel free to reach out for anything that's what we love we love we love talking business so yeah all right cool well thanks guys we'll talk soon <laughs>